Joining us right now, KT McFarland, Fox News National Security Analyst, and certainly want to ask you about the shakeup at the Pentagon and what the ramifications might be and the suggestion that uh, conflict over the Gitmo prisoners may be a part of why Hagel got forced out. But I want to first commend you on this wonderful article you wrote at foxnews.com about what you're thankful for this Thanksgiving. And I, I love the connections you made between your daughters and Walt Disney animated films. Please explain this. I think it's a great take. Uh-oh. KT McFarland is not there. I will we'll ask her about that in a minute. I don't know. I don't want to I, I don't want to jump on board and tell everybody about this uh this connection that she made because I want to hear it from her from her voice. But let's talk about this Hagel thing for a minute, Brian. Uh the story came out yesterday yeah. that part of why Chuck Hagel got pushed out was because of a discrepancy over the Gitmo prisoner release. Uh Hagel didn't want to put his name on it because he had to authorize that those prisoners wouldn't be a threat to America. And he said, Well, I'm not ready to say that. I'm yet. not gonna put my name on that so document. He's, he's gone. Uh, KT McFarland well, is by, back. By the, by the way, Joe yeah. Biden said not to be very happy about this. Uh, we'll ask you about that, in KT, in a sec. But well, you know what? Well, since we've already teed it off, why, why don't you uh, follow up on that, KT? Uh, did, what do you think of the shakeup at the Pentagon now? It's like a revolving door there. Well, look, it's not about the people. It's about the policies. They can get rid of Hagel and try to make him the scapegoat. But the problem is the policies and the micromanagement from the White House. I mean, there are hundreds of White House aides, anonymous White House aides, most of them have never been in the military, don't even like the military, and they're busy micromanaging war fighting tactics yeah. or manning and weapons decisions. That's not their job, and they're not any good at and it. And since so. you were in that bubble, KT McFarland, of course, with your time with with Kissinger, uh, the report is that National Security Advisor Susan Rice was was uh, ordering Hagel to report to her on an almost weekly basis about his progress on certain uh, uh, things. Here, you talk about micromanaging. Does that sound like normal operating procedures? Well, it in depends. The I mean, Kissinger when Kissinger's NSC was a very powerful NSC. I also worked for Cap Weinberger in the. Reagan administration at the Pentagon, and in that administration, it was the cabinet officers. It's really just what works. And in this case, having you know the United States military, which is really good at carrying out um, strategic decisions. You know, the president says, "I want you to do this, defeat ISIS, whatever." The military then says, "Got it, boss. Here's what we need to do the job." And the problem is, in this instance, the boss says, "We want to defeat ISIS," and the military says, "This is what we need to do the job," and then. Then somebody who really doesn't know anything about how to do the job jumps in the middle of it trying so to. You can't them have that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work, and and I think that's why continuous failures happen. Who he chooses next is really critical. Not just because he needs to. He either can do, would do a yes man, and then they're all happy, and America is in trouble. Or they get somebody who's really good, and there are a lot of very good candidates, but including somebody like Ash Carter, Michelle Flournoy, others who who are very substantive respected by all sides, and are straight shooters. But the problem is if the president doesn't want to take their advice, who cares who's in the job? And the, and the critical part of it, this job is really important for the next two years because all the major foreign policy issues the president's going to face all involve the military. Now, we hear that Joe Biden was furious, uh, apparently, at this decision that Hagel must go. And if you look at the event that occurred in the, in the East Room of the White House, uh, it, it did appear that Joe Biden had, I mean, he was decidedly not happy about this. He looked like the next hostage yeah. in the beheading videos. Yeah, he was, he was not happy. So, so what, is there some internal drama going on here? Well, the president's the boss. He has a very close relationship to his immediate inner circle, and they're calling the shots. The problem is they're not very good at it. They're not good managers. And they've gone off on this sort of America in defeat, America in decline mindset. And so as a result, a lot of the, um, for example, a lot of the leverage they would have in negotiating with the Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians, they don't use because they think America's in decline. And they're also, again, because a lot of the major issues the president's had to deal with in foreign policy do involve military, Afghan war, Iraq war, riot of ISIS, Iran's nuclear program, China expanding its footprint in East and South Asia. Those are all military decisions, and the, and the people are surrounding him don't know how to use the military. They think you boss them around like you boss everybody else around, but 
In fact, the military really knows how to do things if they'd only listen to them and take their advice. Uh, Katie McFarlane, we are also seeing uh, what seems to be just chaos with regard to these proposed negotiations with Iran. They had a deadline. They couldn't meet the deadline. They were scrambling to try to meet the deadline. Of course, it was a self-imposed deadline, so now they've given themselves more time. Why are we bending over backwards trying to reach some sort of agreement with Iran? Because they're desperate for a legacy. Uh, that's it. it. has nothing to do with the policy for our nation no, and what's best for the world. I mean, they, 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 want, they want the legacy. At this point in any administration, the big man is thinking about my legacy, my library, how's history going to treat me? And so far, the foreign policy record of the Obama administration yeah is a big, fat flop. Hegel's gone. Do you think Kerry uh, lasts this uh, term? I would say if they... Here's what will happen. If the president gets either a yes man or somebody who's really good that he doesn't listen to, same difference, <laughs> um, then their com policies will continue to fail, and about a year from now they're going to look for a new scapegoat. All right, so uh, I just got to ask you about your Thanksgiving tradition, because I understand it involves your family and Walt Disney. Okay, I am really thankful that I have these two great daughters who were able to have opportunities that really weren't open to women of my generation. But my generation really paved the way. Why? Because we grew up watching Walt Disney movies, Snow White, Cinderella. These are women who, who were orphaned at an early age. They had every obstacle, evil stepmothers, mean girl sisters. Mm -hmm. They were po in poverty. Wicked witches. Wicked witches trying to poison them, assassinate them, disembowel them. And what did they do? They didn't whine. They didn't complain. They were cheerful. They were happy. They got on with their lives. They confronted every crisis, triumphed over it, and in the end met, you know, and wooed Prince Charming. Now, Prince Charming in most of these movies was nothing more than a Ken doll. It was the girl, those little girls who were so yeah. powerful. And so I think that was the real formative influence mm. of women of my generation. You know, KT, you're cutting against the feminist grain here. They, they decry those Disney movies because of the, uh, the princess and how they're depicted. I, I love your take on this. Look, it made, it made a generation of women strong and independent because we all thought we could defeat evil stepmothers, magic. So who's your favorite all. princess, KT McFarland? Who's today's princess? No, your favorite princess. Oh, my favorite. Definitely Snow White. She was the only brunette. It's like me at Fox News. <laughs> You and Fox News. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, KT. That's Happy fabulous. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. And beware of apples offered to you by older women, please. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>